Thank you for joining us on the newsroom at this time. I am Abisola Adebayo. The Nigerian Senate has confirmed the nominations of seven members of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. The confirmation of the nominees followed the consideration of a report by the Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions, which was laid and presented by the chairman of the committee, Senator Uba Sani. Senator Sani, in his presentation, says the nominees possess the academic qualifications, technical knowledge and professional experience to be members of the committee, adding that they were all cleared by the Nigeria Police Force, Department of the State Services, DSS, and possess the Code of Conduct Acknowledgement, SNEEP. The extradition proceedings filed against former Deputy Commissioner of Police Abakiari by the federal government to seek the court's approval to surrender into the United States government has suffered a setback during plenary on Wednesday. The federal government lawyer from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation informed the judge that the case was for a pre preliminary hearing. Bokiari's lawyer, Nureni Jimo, told the court that the government's relevant filings had not been served on him. The judge then adjourned the suit until April 27, 2022, with a directive to Kiari's lawyer to respond to the government's filing within 14 days of being served. A Dutch court has rejected a case brought by four Nigerian widows against all giant shell over their husband's execution by the military regime that ruled the country in the 1990s. They accused Shell of involvement in the arrest, detention, prosecution, and eventual execution of their husbands, who opposed the group's exploitation of oil resources in Ogoni, southern Nigeria. But the Dutch court ruled that their position was based on interpretation and supposition and that they had no evidence to back their accusations. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says the country will lift vaccine mandates for a number of sectors, including teaching and police, from April 4, 2022. A statement released on Wednesday revealed that only those working with vulnerable people, such as aged care and health sector and bother workers, will need to be vaccinated from April 4. Also, vaccine passes will no longer be mandatory to visit restaurants, coffee shops and other public spaces across the country. South Sudan's main opposition party has withdrawn from the country's peace monitoring body, accusing rival forces of unprovoked attacks. The Sudan People's Liberation Movement in opposition says the latest armed assault took place on Monday this week. The party is led by the Vice President Rick Macha, who two years ago formed the unity government with his former enemy, Salva Kerr. Continued tension between the two men has prevented the implementation of a peace deal aimed at ending a five-year civil war in which over four thousand persons has died. The federal government says it has received a total of 6.4 million applications for its Empower Batch C Youth Empowerment Scheme. This was made known by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, at the inauguration of internally displaced persons policy on Wednesday. According to the minister, the policy intends to provide a framework for national responsibility towards prevention and protection of citizens and other forms of internal displacement. The UK and Ireland have submitted a joint bid to UEFA for hosting rights for the 2028 European Championships. The Football Association of England, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Scotland and Wales initially united to confirm they would be focusing on a bid for Euro 2028 in February while abandoning plans to stage the World Cup two years later. Meanwhile, all interested parties have a deadline of March 23rd to register their interest and the English FA have confirmed their joint proposal has been sent to UEFA just before the deadline. Well, that's all in the newsroom at this time. Thank you for watching.